Today is number eight. Howdy everybody, Steve here, KM9G. Let's get this one repaired. Y'all know what I mean. Well, she's upside down, that's part of it. The box is a little crumpled, there's a little extra tape, there's a kind of a bulge on the side. Is this one gonna be exciting or is this gonna be another? <laughs> okay, I did open up the last one myself. Is this gonna be another one of those, this radio is only locked or somebody just doesn't like it? We will find out together. Manual, we did not have a manual in the last one. We did not have packing material. Oh, sorry, sorry. Did not have packing material. We've got the microphone. We've got all the mounting hardware in its bag, all, all done up. We have the power cable. The power cable is, yeah. So on the last one, you guys maybe don't remember, but you guys should have seen that the, the tinning on the wire was way down to here. Maybe it's just how, maybe, you know, cause I'm sure they just dip these in a solder pot as they're going down the assembly line. So maybe somebody just dipped a little too, too much, but power cord not used. That's good. The radio, the radio still has its screen protector on it. It's a little, a little dusty, but none the worse for wear. Okay. The mounting bracket and, and the programming cable. Awesome. All right. So everything we need is in there and we will get that put back in there. Because none of that stuff do we need for this job. All right, let's get you switched. We're going to use the N76 to test, receive, and transmit on uh, two meter call and 70 centimeter call. We've got the radio, the power meter, the ABR coax, and the cell wave dummy load so we can test all the things. Let's get rid of some, some brightness. Okay, let's plug in for the first time. And she blipped, but she didn't come on. Okay, good. So we've got that set up right from the factory. Nobody's changed and put their call sign in. 154 with tones and offsets. What are you doing on 154, son? All right, let's put this on a, on a real band. All right, so we've got that. Let's get you set up. We're on 146.52 over there. We've got our power meter down here. We're gonna, we're gonna test some of that out also. Testing, testing, one, two, three. Okay, and so that must have been that must have been low power. All right, high power is 22 and a, and a third. Low power 344, mid power 12. Okay, power's, power's in spec, in the weird spec that they guys, that those guys do. Let's do 446000. Okay, so she's unlocked, but I kind of had a feeling she was unlocked. And that must be mid power. There's low power, three watts, mid power, 10 watts, high power, 22 watts. So another thing, I didn't mention this in the last video, but you can see down here, 13.6 volts. And when I key up, it drops down to 12 volts. So that might be another reason why the power is low. So let's check the manual. What is the voltage input specification? 13.8 volts plus or minus 15%. Okay. All right, so let's take a look at 13.8 times 1.15. So 15.87 volts is what I can give this thing. And I've got a variable voltage power supply. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna crank the voltage up a little bit. I've, I'm gonna go up as high as I can so that when I transmit, it doesn't drop back down below 13.6 and see what the output power is. All right, so for grins, we're at 8.2 volts and she still lights up. And at the bottom it says DC low and she won't transmit. So I'm gonna turn the voltage adjust up and will it notice automatically? 8.3, 8.5, 8.7, 9.3, there we go. Now we've got voltage back and not enough to really transmit. Yeah, she, she tries and then she gives up. Let's keep going, it said 10, I believe, 10 volts, didn't say 10. So let's do times 0 0.15, so two volts. So then we do 2.07 volts. So 13.8 minus 2.07, 11.73 is where it's supposed to be able to transmit. We're at 10 volts even, and we can't transmit at 10. 10.5, 10.5, 10.5, 10.5. 
and we can't transmit a temp it did put out 16 watts for a second there that didn't work so this is your this is your plus or minus 15 percent and we can transmit there and we're putting out 17.9 okay good let's crank the voltage up we already know what 13.8 is so i'm just going to skip right up Ooh, too high I'm going to skip right up to, yeah, it, it jumps too fast. 14 volts, 14.1 volts, 14.3 volts. And we drop down to 13.1 on transmit. Let's switch over to 146.5.2, mostly because radios on 2 meters, they're usually rated at high watts on 2 meters and slightly less watts on 70 centimeters. Okay, so 22.36, are we still on high power? 22.33, so that's 14.3, 14.8, 22.36 still, 14.8, and when we transmit, we go from 14.8 at standby to 13.9 on transmit, and that's that's as much as I can give it. My power supply says 15.2 volts, and the reading on the radio says 14.8, and I've got some, I've got quite a lot of power cord between the power supply and the radio. 13.9, 22, all right, let's change that, take that out from multiple jumpers. Now we're plugged directly into the front of the power supply. 14.9, yeah, that's still as good as I can go. 22 point whatever. Okay, so that answers that question. All right, so with the test gear that I have here, it's an Elenco power supply, and it's good enough for what I'm doing. If I do run across an actual real bench power supply that has better certified outputs, we'll try this test again in the future. But I was trying to figure out if the test could if the, the test was to try and figure out if the radio could output more power if it was given more power to output with. Because when you transmit, there's a little bit of a voltage sag. It looked like it still didn't get over, it still didn't get to 25 watts. So I don't know that that's the answer or not. But again, on the SWR meter, you guys also saw that there is some SWR. It's not 1.00, it's 1 dot something. And so you have to factor that in. So if you factored that back out and made it 1.0, you might get a little closer to 25 watts. Either way, for the price point of these things, I'm not making excuses for Redivus. For the price point of these things, it's a fantastic deal. The radio works great. The difference between 22 watts and 25 watts isn't going to, isn't going to make a life or death decision, I don't think. I don't think it's even going to change much. From 5 to 25 watts, that's a difference. Back to the test. All right, and because we do, let's test uh, GMRS. Why not? Is it, is it fully unlocked? Oh, we got all the way out to 525. And we can transmit, and 16 watts. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. All right, so let's test out the microphone. We know the numbers work. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Star, zero, pound. A, B, C, D. Okay, cool. All right, so next up, we need to test transmit. One, four, six, five, two, zero. Oh, I hit a button. Yeah, I'm in, I'm not in VFO mode anymore. One, four, six, five, two, zero. Testing transmit, and we are receiving on the other radio. All right, let's do, let's do this. Menu, channel, let's go to the second channel. Return, return. Let's switch over to VFO mode and let's do 4460000. There, now I'm, I'm too lazy to switch back and forth more than that one time. So on VFO A, we've got two meter call. On VFO B, we've got 70 centimeter call. All right, so let's switch the radio. Testing, testing, yep, we're testing. And I can hear it coming out of there, no problem. Okay, so now we need to do function. Change that to name for our next test. Oh, it was coming out of both. All right, so there's the main speaker only. Main speaker only, yep. And then handle only, handle only, 
Yeah, that's that's definitely coming out of the handle. That's a loud handle, Mike. Okay. And then for grins, because I know y'all were going to ask, it was on 153. I switched it back to... Stop that. It was on 153 something. Yeah, it'll transmit down on 153. Don't do that. Do not, do not do that. And so the reason why I can do that is because of this little thing called a dummy load. So I am able to transmit from the 25 watts of fury on the Redivis through the dummy load into the radio that's sitting in the same room with me. The dummy load doesn't remove all of your signal. It removes pretty large chunk of your signal. So that if you're going to be doing ham radio testing, you need a dummy load and they're, they're fairly cheap, but it, it enables you to, to play with a lot of different things and not embarrass yourself on the airwaves. So I embarrass myself on YouTube videos, but you probably don't want to embarrass yourself on the airwaves. So get a dummy load if you're going to do any kind of testing. I'll have a link in the description down below for you. Oh, and that means it's programming test time. Let's get over to the other side of the ginormous ham shack and test some radio programming. We got the software up and running. I do not have the radio connected. Now the radio is connected. Let's do a read from radio. Current time? No, I don't want to. This is from the previous repair. I don't want to save it. No. Communication port. That's true because I did it underneath of you. Let's try one more time. No. Can't. Okay, that's not true. Again, I removed it from the previous video. Read. Again. Technician's secret weapon. Just start over. Anything interesting? Ooh, lots of stuff. 462, 467. Yeah. Wow. This was all done on GMRS stuff, and there's some tones in there. 154, 355. Without a transmit tone. With a... No, sorry, without a receive tone, but with a transmit tone. And then another one down here, 136, 141, with a split. Why, why are you splitting that, son? With some transmit tones. Yeah, don't mess around on frequencies you don't belong on, folks. So, let's take this. Can we do multi-select? Let's delete them all. No, 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 no. Okay, I'm going to do new. All data will be reset. Yes! And these are the ones that come up in the programming software from the factory. We're just going to go ahead and change these to 146.520. And this is going to be V dash C. <laughs> this, this one just goes in all kinds of different directions. When you're doing your visual basic coding 30 years ago, test your work, son. 146.520. We need ham radio programmers. If you have any kind of programming talent whatsoever, or if you're interested in it, you can't do any worse. You can't do any worse than than this software. And people have paid for this software. So, I mean, imagine if you did a good job, you could get paid for this software too. Let's hit OK on that one. And now here's where it gets interesting. This is one of one of the reasons why I'm kind of ranting about this. When I do it a second time, 446.000, and then it dumps me down. Instead of going to the next field, it dumps me down to channel name, U. And I think this is the one where I can do it all backwards. L, L, A, C, dash. Yes, and I could not do that in the previous version. Transmit power high. Everything else is good. Hit OK. So now I've wiped out that nasty code plug that was in there. And we're going to write it back to the radio with a with a clean one. Yes, I want to continue. All right, let's get over to the radio and test the up and down and the programming and blah, blah, blah. All right, so we have some channels in there. Let's go to memory mode. And then that's not working because it's locked like it's supposed to be. And it programmed in the default channels and not the ones I typed in. Yay, back to the computer. If you can't do it right the first time, do it right the second time. So let's read from radio. I mean, it did reset the code plug, but I, y'all saw me put channels in there. So behind the scenes, one of the things that happened was when it rebooted, it didn't have a uh, opening message at all. It didn't say anything. It said black screen. And I didn't like that. So I rewrote the black screen to it. And maybe when I did that, that's when this went sideways. I don't know. Yep, there we go. So. That's where you change the starting display. So let's do... All right, let's 
try it again. Did it work? It says V call. It says U call. It says V call, U call. There we go. And then if I lock the microphone, it doesn't work at all, which it's not supposed to. So we unlock and then it works just fine. Perfect. All right, so that is number eight in the series. And so far, they're just returns. People just didn't like them for some reason. I don't know. I'm not worried about it. These are, as I've said before in previous videos, these are Amazon returns. So far, there has been hardly anything at all that I've had to do with them other than just prove that they work so that I'm happy, so that when you receive it, you'll be happy. Quick update, these are sold out, but I have more. Send me an email if you want any one of these abandoned, orphaned, unloved radios, and I will get you a list of what they are and tell me how many you want and I'll get you a shipping quote. We'll get it all sent out to you. I always got something for sale. My point in this exercise is number one, it's fun just to forensic, forensic ham, what did, they, what did I call this the other day? Forensic hamologist. It's, it's fun just to do forensic hamology. See what, see what happens, see what people programmed into their radios, see, you know, kind of, kind of try and figure stuff out. These are Amazon returns. People ask me, how do you get Amazon returns? You network, you hustle, you Google search, you make contacts, you talk to people. Don't reach out to Redivis because I'm their guy. I'm already doing this for them. They're just going to say, we got a guy. It's, it's me. So find another radio company and reach out to them and see what they say. And you can get it. It is a lot easier if you want to get a cheap radio just to go buy this thing on Amazon. I'll leave a link in the description down below for that for you as well. The reason why is because I've got eight, nine, 10 of these radios that I've got to go through and do this repair work on. It takes time to do the repair work. I've got to make sure they work. I've got to put in missing parts if there are any missing parts. So far, there have been a couple of programming cables missing. I have put those in. Depending on how fast these things sell, I'll give you a discount if there's not a programming cable because it's not the end of the world if it doesn't have one. You can get one. Or you can make one, because I've done that too. It was a gamble. I have no idea what it would what it would take to make this happen. But it was going to be fun. I mean, there's there's three types of fun. There's there's type one fun, fun when you're doing it, fun to remember it. I guess it's fun to plan, fun to do, fun to remember. Type two fun, fun to plan, not fun to do, fun to remember. Type three fun, not fun to plan, not fun to do. Don't ever want to remember that you ever did that thing in the first place. Maybe I got those a little off, but it, it's an old wives' tale. It's been handed down for generations, and you know how that works. Things things change over time, and nobody knows who the original was. Maybe you do. If you do, go ahead and correct me down in the comments, because that's what YouTube comments are for, is to tell me all the things that I've ever done wrong in my life. It was fun to play with the power output, and I had some money at risk if it blew up, but it didn't It didn't blew up. It, it worked fine. So now i got to figure out a more steady power supply. This one's good enough to get my job done. It's not necessarily good enough to, to be lab grade, but that's what most ham radio stuff is, and it is fine. And so is this radio. So again, reach out to me if you want it. There's a video right over here I think you might enjoy next. Thanks for being awesome. I'll see you over there.